Да. Все восьмерки пароль. Четыре, шесть, пять, четыре, шесть, два, один. Hi everyone! Hello. It's again Monday, our favorite day, and we hope it's your favorite day too, because if it's Monday, it means it's a time for Lazarski Talks. As you see today, things look a little bit different. Of course, we have a new guest as every episode. Uh, so we are going to talk about the guest a little bit later. But as well, I have a change on my right side. As you can see, uh, a co-organizer of, of this meeting is going to be Darena. That was our guest last time. Anastasia, <laughs> who is resting today. So uh, Anastasia, yes. we, are, we are wishing you to have a very good holiday there. She's actually here with us and watching. Uh, so today I'm going to have as my co-host an amazing help um, Darena and we are going to make this evening I hope nice for Osta because we have so many is interesting questions for him so let's go back to our guest can I, but can before I just interrupt you for a second before we start I want to remind you that we are all here corona free yes we everyone tested, healthy everyone healthy everyone yep. negative <laughs> in this case and also I would like to remind you to mute your microphone so we will not have any interference okay uh, so we are starting so uh, how many people is here uh, are you still joining uh, we are very happy that uh, some of you are here on time always as always thank you very much uh, guys so let's start our amazing guest today is our amazing lecturer and we got so many votes that he's going to take part with us in this event so welcome Ostap uh, could you tell a few words about yourself uh, okay, uh, thank you. I mean, it's, it's so amazing to be here. Let's, you know, like put it straightforwardly. I'm really honored. I'm really, I was looking forward to come here and maybe, you know, like to have a word, to have a chat with all those cool people on the other side of the screen, because yes, you are cool. Uh, and yes, I'm looking forward to, to hear your questions and, you know, interact with you. So, I mean, briefly about myself. I mean, Ostap Kushner, uh, lecturer and researcher with Lazarsky University, Department of Government Studies. Uh, what I'm doing for, um, for life is running different researches on, on European affairs, specifically Central European affairs, publishing books, delivering classes, uh, trying to enjoy my life. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, originally I'm from Ukraine because I know that there were some kind of, not gossips, but you know, like there, there was some mystery you know, going on around at Lazarsky University, where I'm from. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Ukraine. Uh, so confirmed. Confirmed, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> confirmed. Uh, I graduated Lazarsky University, that's one of my degrees, and if you, um, and you know, th the way I communicate in English, that's because of Lazarsky University here, that was the place I polished my English, so I mean. Uh, all English teachers are fainting now. No, no, come uh, on, you know, come <laughs> on, <laughs> yes. come on. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really kind of happy to be a uh, graduate from Lazarsky University because it, it, I mean, it broadened my horizons in, in many, many respects. You know? Wow, thanks a lot. That's are very nice words. Uh, actually, it was not agreed earlier. Okay, nothing is pre-agreed here, uh, guys. We are having Ostap here, and we prepared some topics with Darina to discuss mm -hmm. today with Ostap because we think it's really, really important for you to know these things. Maybe some of you may find part of Ostap history in your own life. Uh, so we hope this is going to be uh, helpful for you. Remember, as always, we want you to ask questions. And as, as last time, we will have an amazing rewards for those who are asking the most interesting questions. Okay, so Ostap at the end of the event is going to choose which question was the most important and you are going to be able to get a prize you are going to pick up your prize in the sector D from Azarsky University That's right. Right, and guys, we have on the table today some gadgets. I don't know if you can see this. I'm sure you do. We have a books here. And by the way, we have some cars. So boys, <laughs> get ready. This is going to be something interesting for Car you. Talk. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and those things are here not without a reason. Uh, I, I don't know if you are aware, but Ostap is a person, uh, it's super creative person. And you wrote, okay, in your relatively uh, short uh, you know life until now because you're still quite young you wrote already eight books and these books are so diversified and we know that these books are your whole life and actually they are related to your life story if you could tell us a little bit more about you know 
what are these books about and mm -hmm. maybe which one of them might be useful or interesting for our students to read them uh, okay uh, that's that's a global question i should say yeah uh i mean uh, it'll take some time to explain all this stuff so i mean to begin with i was born in comparatively small town in ukraine uh, and uh, and I graduated school there, and when I was at school, I, I enjoyed reading about adventures. Uh, I enjoyed reading about you know, Caribbean sea pirates, all that stuff. And also, I liked reading fantasy because fantasy was kind of escape into the world, never ever land, and whatsoever. So I, s I started reading reading fantasy. It, it, it all started from that little town. Uh, then uh, I moved to Odessa, to a bit bigger city uh, in Ukraine, where I applied for. Um, BA and later MA in journalism. So my first education, my first degree, they are journalist. Well, and yeah, and when I when I was just and, and, and you know the journalist journalist department, it was at the faculty of philology. So I learned a lot about literature as well, and you know like having kind of accumulated some knowledge about literature and continuing reading the fantasy books, I started noticing that well these guys they are not working at their fullest i can see mistakes i can see inconsistencies i see that th th in this particular passage they decided you know like to to write everything in a very simple mm -hmm. way so i i stopped enjoying fantasy as much as i wanted because i started noticing gaps mm -hmm. and you know like yeah i'm kind of perfectionist sorry for that so i mean and at a certain moment of time i decided okay I will write the perfect fantasy. I mean, that, that was, you know, the, the case. And mm -hmm. I got inspired by, by one author and I decided, okay, I, I can do better. I mean, so was it Vyajimin? No. The Witcher? No. No. I'm sure all of you know The Witcher. I, yeah. Okay. Anyway, I'm not going deeper into that. So uh, there was an author, you know, which I just, you know, read uh, his books and then they decided I can do better. Uh, especially with my you know, like degree in journalism and well that's that's how things started so my first book it's in ukrainian it's fantasy the appearance of the magician uh mm -hmm. there are three volumes already written the first volume is here is published it was published in 2009 so kind of long time ago mm -hmm. and i managed to sell out all the books uh i mean 1500 copies in a month Whoa, so I have whoa. reviews, I, uh, positive reviews, all the stuff on the internet. You may actually find, you know, like if you Google my name and second name, and you know, type in the appearance of a magician, you will be able to to find these reviews and opinions on, on that book. And you know, like, but you know, uh, it's it's told because uh, in year 2010 I moved to Poland. Um, I had time. I mean, this book, this is the book I was writing alongside my f first PhD. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, in 2010, I wrote my first PhD in journalism. How many PhDs you have? Two. I mean, I, uh, I defended <laughs> one, but I, I had two. I wrote two PhDs. Uh, but, uh, well, um, I mean, in 2010, my supervisor in Ukraine, he told me that you are too young to defend PhD. Let's wait. Mm -hmm. And we started waiting. And while we were waiting, I wrote three volumes of this book. Uh -huh. uh, and, well, but, you know, like... Uh, it didn't work out. The defense didn't work out. So um, because of objective reasons mainly, and I, you know, it was the decision, you know, like uh, taken within an hours that mm -hmm. I'm I'm going to Poland. I'm you know rebooting my life actually and trying myself again. So I apply. I arrived here, and having PhD written, I applied for MA studies at mm -hmm. Lazowski University. At that time, these were a uh, University of Wales validated studies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I finished them in one year because you can't finish British degree, MA degree in a year. Mm -hmm. So it, mean, it meant that, you know, like in summer I was writing my thesis. I mean, thesis I, I spent writing in summer. Uh, and well, I, I got uh, that MA degree there and defended in 2015 another one, PhD dissertation mm -hmm. uh, about geopolitics. Okay. So uh, in 2015, I started getting interesting in cars. Uh, I mean, I can't say that I was never interested in cars. I mean, but in 2015, that was kind of um, the water bridge moment, uh, the watershed moment. Because, I mean, scrolling on Facebook, uh, I, I noticed uh, Jeremy Clarkson. I hope you know about him. Top of Gear course. Grand Tour. Uh, Top Gear. Yeah. Everyone knows this. Even girls, right? Okay. I mean, yeah. Do you? Yes, sure. Uh, definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, well, and uh, Jeremy Clarkson, you know, I was scrolling on the Facebook and Jeremy Clarkson said, Hey, you. And I, he's, are you talking to me? I mean, yeah, j join Drive Tribe. And what is Drive Tribe? And just, uh, just checked out, checked it out. Mm -hmm. Because, well, I respect Jeremy Clarkson. He's a very smart guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm just, I, I enjoy reading his mm -hmm. text. 
And it appears that drive drive is sort of Facebook, but mm -hmm. for all people who own cars, like cars, bicycles, motorcycles, whatever, with wheels. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, like a kind of side product of Jeremy Clarkson, James May, and Richard Hammond. Mm -hmm. So we just, you know, like sign up there. And at first, I was kind of, you know, like lost because there were a lot of professional journalists writing for that, you know, network. But then I, it appeared that there is some space for me, and I just, you know, like started publishing short. You know, pieces of whatever reflections on cars, and well, uh, it it started generating attention. Right now, I have fourteen thousand followers. Congratulations! Uh, yes, Press and uh, I decided one day to just to to collect all my pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, written for Drive Tribe starting from twenty sixteen because twenty sixteen that's that's time I registered, and yeah, that's that's the this is the book. Also on Drive Tribe, I found. Um, Matt Parsons, uh, a car designer from South Africa. So I'm writing articles. He draws pictures for them. So mm -hmm. this is kind of unique, uh, you know, product. And uh, you know, the second volume is is almost ready. I need to finish like three articles more, and we'll mm -hmm. publishing the second volume because this is an, an introduction to academic driving. Second volume there will be advanced academic driving, uh, and then third volume another academic driving, which is more advanced than advanced. Okay, I okay. have to say something in this place because I noticed something that is super, I think, valuable for our listeners. Okay. okay? Many of young people, especially now, uh, they have sometimes a problem with deciding what they want to do in their life and okay. which of their hobbies or which of their passions can be combined with their uh, life and with the work that is giving them income, let's be honest. Okay. Uh, we were talking about this with Darina last time, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because uh, sometimes, you know, uh, parents are telling us, oh, go and study international relations or go and study economics or go and study and become mm -hmm. an engineer. But actually, our passion is something else, right? Our passion is dancing or our passion is uh, our cars, okay? Or our passion is writing books, uh, right? B becoming mm -hmm. an author. So, uh, your advice for young people, if if they are studying one thing, but actually they have a hobby which is not related to what they study. Um, actually, because your life is showing that you can pursue and actually you can use all your resources and all your, your hobbies and you can be successful in this. Oh, I can't say that I'm successful. Uh, well, uh, the, the amount of money I earn still, you know, it's, you it know, has a room for growth, but yeah. Uh, so uh, anyway, um, well, for me, uh, well, uh, I, I, you know, I divide kind of my activities into two fields, mm -hmm. things which should be done and things which I want to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I'm trying to balance those things. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you cannot escape the reality. You are part of the society. You are like, you know, Aristotle said, you're a social animal. You live in the environment of people who have expectations related to you. And you also have expectations, you know, like related to other people. So whether you want it or not, you are existing in certain frames, mm -hmm. which objective to you, which you can't really change. Anyway, you really try, but you know, the success, I'm not sure it will be overwhelming. Uh, and then you have the things which uh, you want to happen. And mm -hmm. these are your hobbies, your dreams, your expectations. Um, I mean, the way you like spending time. Mm -hmm. And uh, at a certain moment, um, the hobby may stop being simply a hobby. Because, uh, you know, in the life, I mean, uh, I, I, I tend to, to is to look at the life of a human being kind of stages and you cannot jump over some stages uh, even you may accelerate those stages but you cannot jump over those stages so mm -hmm. at a certain moment of time you understand how to convert your hobby into something more than a hobby mm -hmm. but you will not be that kind of successful doing that at 16 years old for instance because mm -hmm. you you still lack that knowledge you you lack that you know grip of reality mm -hmm. where you can you can jump in so i mean in other in other words you know uh, imagine your life as a Warsaw city uh huh okay you need to get from ursino where you live to mm -hmm. the city center city center this is your desired objective whatever parties there whatever or you know success let's put it there. city center is success so um there are different ways to get to the city center from ursinov mm -hmm. you may take a car and drive on the fastest road or you may take a subway or you may take a car and then decide you know like to avoid traffic jams mm -hmm. and just you know you are starting zigzagging around the world or you know like you're 
Google phone or Google becomes faulty, Google Maps, and you're stick, stuck in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So the point is that eventually you will get to the city center. You will become successful. Mm -hmm. But there are dozens of different ways to get there. Mm -hmm. And it's up to you to decide which road is the best for you. Mm -hmm. And you should always keep in mind that there are traffic jams and that the metro, I mean, can simply break on the way. So there are you know, unpredictable circumstances, but you know where you're going and you have different options to get there. Wow. That's actually one of the most beautiful metaphorics uh, that I've heard, uh, honestly, because this is so accurate, right? Uh, so in my opinion, right, you need to know where you are getting. So you need to know your aim. For some, an aim will be to become a celebrity. For, for some yeah. person, the aim will be to become inventor. Okay, for some person it will be uh, to become a writer, for someone it's just going to become rich, okay? Mm -hmm. But you know where you are getting and you're just on the way, right? Yep. And you cannot give up, that's the most important thing. Uh, I mean, it's not recommended. Yeah. You may take a, a short break, but yeah. About giving up, we are having uh, a question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, first of all, I will read that. What inspire you to write books and where you are searching for inspiration? And I would like to add something, not only about inspiration for writing a book, inspiration for not to giving up. Oh, okay. <laughs> where are you finding that? Uh, you know, inspiration. Uh, well, uh, it's, you know, like the first book, you know, the, the fantasy, it's just, you know, like an understanding at the moment that, you know, like I can do better and the reader deserves better. So. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, like, it's like, you know, let me test myself. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let me, whether I can really do better. This stuff is just, you know, uh, I got inspired by, by Clarkson, Hammond and May because they are really witty guys. They present uh, the world with humor because they are show Grand Tour, Top Gear, whatever you call it. It's not about cars. It's about life. It's about world. Grand Tour, you're taking a car and you're traveling in Madagascar, um, in, uh, I don't know, uh, Latin America, in mm -hmm. Bolivia, whatever. They are showing the world to the viewer by just, you know, like by using cars as tools. So that's what I also doing like this, you know, like I'm bringing science to people through cars. And, and mm -hmm. by the way, dear students, I mean, some of these stories may help you pass in your exams because they... So observation, observing uh, someone who will be your inspiration uh, someone yes. who might be your idol or your father figure, let's call it. Yes, and finding your spot. Because, oh. I mean, uh, at a certain moment of observation, you understand, that, wow, there is a niche no one covered, no one have ever covered before. Mm -hmm. Why not trying? Uh, th then you are not copying someone's work. You are, you know, you are perceiving, for instance, mm -hmm. that father figure as someone who succeeded right. at, at, you know, like at his or her, you know, methodology works. So, well, okay, I'll do very similar, but different. Mm -hmm. Or similar, but very different. Yeah, that's better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> that's actually interesting questions. Yeah, thank uh, you for that. Also, the same girl is asking, uh, which part of writing book you enjoy most of all, and what is the most difficult part? Uh, most of all, probably the research. Again, when I'm, when I'm mm -hmm. trying to find something which just sticks together uh, and sounds convincing, I'm reading a lot. You know, encyclopedias, different, you know, for instance, here, I also read quantum physics to do that. I mean, and that was, that was marvelous. Wow. That was really marvelous. I mean, you discover, uh, the world without discoveries. Well, it's, it's a good one, but still not the best one. So d you can discover things every new day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and, and when I'm reading something about astrophysics, uh, Asian philosophy, medicine, uh, architecture, uh, so I'm discovering. It, it's my personal enjoyment, you know, like, I, oh, wow, I didn't know about that, but it exists, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so that, that was, that, that's the, the, the moment of discovery uh, for me. And, you know, like, uh, there is a belief, I heard from one philosopher once, he said that you are getting old when you stop being amused and amazed by the world. When, wow. When the discoveries, that's deep, guys. When discoveries <laughs> stop <laughs> happening in your life, because when you are not being impressed by anything, uh, well, your time, you, I mean, you feel that the time starts flowing faster. Mm -hmm. If you have a child, the child, I mean, every touch is a discovery. And you know, mm -hmm. like when I remember myself being a 
child, you know, like I was, I want to grow older. Where are my 16 years? It was so kind of long period of time to get to this 16 years, mm -hmm. yeah? But, but that was the time when the majority of discoveries happened. Afterwards, you know, because we get experience, we have fewer and fewer discoveries on a daily basis. Do more! Discoveries make you feel I mean, happier. Right? That's an amazing thing. Uh, sometimes uh, I'm, I'm personally like when I'm meeting with the students, when I'm talking to them and I'm sure you have the same things. Sometimes students are, are coming, they're deciding to study something and it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. They decided to study management or they decided to study economics or something else, or they decided themselves or someone else decided for them. Sometimes they say, oh, I'm bored, oh, this is not interesting, um, why should I read these books, why, sh why should I research on that, I don't see the point of that. And very often uh, I see that really they are bored uh, with, uh, with, with their studies, but sometimes I have this feeling it's not because studies are boring, but because they do not have this discovery sparkle in them that they focus only on one thing that they don't like it i don't like econometrics or i hate maths right but they um they, they are not trying to get to know you know to, to research on the things because maybe in in quantum physics that i have no idea about there is something that would amaze me right yeah so I really a lot of things okay amazing. how to motivate yourself okay you are a young person you are 18 19 you are studying economics that is not exactly whatever you wanted to study but how to make your life of a student more interesting uh, it's a time management question too oh uh, well you know like how to make life more interesting because uh, your life is so interesting oh, I oh thank you I, I can't complain but i can say that you know like it's it's, it's, it's super, busy it's, it's busy let's put it this way and sometimes you know, i'm simply lacking energy for new discoveries uh it happens so how to make life more interesting it's just start reading uh sign up for different groups on facebook which are like for instance popular science or you know super mega advanced photography uh -huh. or just underwater boating or just flying on delta I, you may not even know anything about that mm -hmm. but just try and if after a week of reading of scrolling the you know feed you understand that yes this is something interesting or mm -hmm. this will lead me to a new discovery or oh, this will broaden my horizons okay i'm you know i'm staying in that group if not okay sorry i'm trying something different or at least on this group i can meet other people similar to Definitely. me that will help me to develop or maybe we are going to figure out something ourselves yeah well i mean uh, i found uh, matt parsons uh, here on tri tribe i mean i never know he's in south africa I yeah mean, the, and the you're only, in poland yeah i'm in poland he's south africa you know we have the similar time zone that's nice but <laughs> but well you know that's different hemisphere and we are still we are in, i mean i can't like, we are friends we are really you know like we are commenting on one another's work and we appreciate one another's contribution so i mean the, the world is open use these opportunities right that's amazing also uh, use lazarsky university and a professor and dr ostap kushnir who is inspiring uh, i oh, wow, would like thanks. to switch to our comment actually this is a compliment from anas your student oh wow uh, <laughs> thanks, in anas. the very very beginning of our episode he taxes our lovely and dear professor inspiration and motivation so I want you to Bravo. know that, that's true, Thanks, since I pleasure. used to be your student as well, I'm confirming that. Um, sticking to this comment, you're actually an ins inspiration and motivator to our students. And I did a small research and I get a comment that your approach to teaching mm -hmm. students is different. And I'm confirming that again. And I have to confirm that even though I'm not a student, this is exactly the thing I heard from other students. Yes, and this is common opinion. So, can you comment on that? Why it's different? Well, it's very hard to comment on common opinion, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> you have yeah, no well. choice now. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, what makes your approach toward young people different than others? Uh, well, uh, to begin with, uh, I, I like discovery. I like speaking to people. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like um, exchange with information. And, well... Um, I, I perceive, I, tend, I want, I think, I hope that I am doing that this way. Mm -hmm. I am perceiving young people as individuals who have already made se several important decisions in their lives. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they, they, I mean, they are staying or they stood on a track 
leading to certain kind of city center, certain way to get to city center, yeah? So when I'm seeing a, any student, any student is an individual who decided to spend at least three years or two years or five years if BA and MA program combined at Lazowski. Mm -hmm. That student, that person decided to invest five, or three or two years of his or her life mm -hmm. to acquiring knowledge here at this university in Poland at this particular program. Mm -hmm. This is an important decision in the life of an individual. I mean, this decision may have been taken under different considerations. I mean, I mean, very different, you know, uh, students are motivated by different uh, Things, reasons to, right. to, to join Lazowski. Mm -hmm. but, but the fact is, they are here. And, well, uh, I mean, I would like myself to be kind of constructive, you know, element in their lives. In these kind of three, two or five years, mm -hmm. they would like to spend at Lazarsky University because they made their decision and I respect the decision. And well, let me kind of exchange the information. I would like to, to get the feedback why the students are here, what they are looking for, what they are searching mm -hmm. for and what I can offer to them. Uh, mm -hmm. And by you know, like on, on that exchange, come on, everyone makes it his or her it's own discovery. It's a game discovery. for everyone. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a, a game, game for and everyone. It's, it's a discovery. Right. So. That, that's amazing response. Uh, and I think that, uh, guys, if you did not yet have a classes with OSTAP, remember to choose it as one of your electives. And we have some other really interesting questions coming. Questions. Right. If we can, can just briefly go back uh, to the topic of books, yeah. um, there was a question couple of them how to find your own style of writing and also one of our student Ines she was asking if you could tell your younger writing self anything what would it be and what advice can you give for young writers okay how to find inspiration you should read it will come I mean uh, at certain moment of time, you, you, when, when you're reading books, whatever you would like to read, newspaper articles, you know, quantum physics journals, w whatever. At certain moment, you start it, it starts kicking in that you have something to say, something extra, something mm -hmm. which, which had never been said before, and you start finding your niche and you know how to fill that niche out. You 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 have these fa father mm -hmm. figures who just you know proved on their example that things happen. Well, okay do it your way so uh, that's uh, that's the way um, uh, the you know what if uh, uh, what would I tell my my younger self when I was young I mean well you cannot bypass certain stages in your life mm -hmm. you may squeeze them you may accelerate them uh, but the experience you need to get I mean you need to get you cannot bypass that um, well, you know, like one of my biggest fears, I mean, I'm telling you my secret. Uh, one of my biggest fears is this is the, the fear of lost time. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it means that, okay, uh, I know something, I can contribute to the society, to other people in some way. I can exchange with information, yeah? But uh, I'm very afraid to miss the time, not to do everything I can do mm -hmm. in, uh, in the domain I'm good at. So uh, and then, you know, like I'll feel that, you know, like I underperformed and because maybe I underperformed, you know, uh, someone did not get from, from me or from his or her life, you know, maximum, which I could offer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm trying to catch up with time. Yes. Uh, try to squeeze as much as I can do in the time span, which, uh, you know, I would like to, okay. to have. Uh, so, so yeah, so do not, do not bypass. And, um, there was a question from Ines. Uh, can you read it again? Yes. Uh, what advice can you give to f for younger writers? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, for younger yourself. writers, read a lot. Just just read. I mean, and it will kick in. Okay. Okay. In this, your really busy and fast schedule in your lifetime, at which period and which point of time you decided to become a lecturer? Oh, well. Uh, this is actually uh, based on the question from our beautiful host Anastasia Menshkova. Uh, She's asking that. Well, when I was probably 12 years old. Well, wow! <laughs> Uh, yeah, I so didn't expect that. I wanted to become a princess that time. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> the 12 or 14. So the point is that, well, look, I was born to the dynasty of doctors. 
my father is a surgeon, my brother is a surgeon, my mother is biochemist, mm -hmm. uh, my grandma was also, you know, like a uh, doctor. So, uh, and you know, everyone has supposed to me that, that, okay, you will go into our steps, you will be the doctor, you know. But I'm, I'm terribly afraid of blood. Specifically, when it's my blood, I'm just uh, knocking off and goodbye. So you see. You Remember, tomorrow. guys, don't bleed at the class. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Please don't. <laughs> no. Well, you know, the point is that I like chemistry. I like. I know biology. Yes, but as just I see blood, something happens. It kicks in. Yeah, let's put it this way. So, uh, and and then you know, like the incident happened when I was around 14, and then my father looked at me and said, "No, you will not. You would not go into that. You know, like medicine." medicine. Mm -hmm. And that was the you know the the decision, the, the watershed moment, you know, then if not doctor, who would I be? And my grandfather, uh, he was professor and he spent the whole his life, you know, teaching geography. Mm -hmm. And that was another inspiration for me. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, in, in my family, in my closest, among my closest relatives, I had an example to follow, a father figure, mm -hmm. a grandfather figure. Yeah. So, and that, that was, you know, like, okay, maybe then science. And because I liked reading and I liked writing, we decided to go into, into journalism, mass media, this kind of domain. So yeah, th that's why I wrote my first PhD in journalism. Okay, so it was really early age and this is actually very lucky because you have your family support, right? Yes. On which path of your life you can take. And what about young people? that they are 19, 20, they are at the university, they, they are doing some kind of study, mm -hmm. but they still do not know who shall I become? What shall I do in my life? Of course, there are this, you know, prof professional orientation uh, exams, you know, the tests that you can do. But what is your advice for a person? If I'm 19 or 20 and I'm still lost, I don't know. Shall I go this way or that way or that way? What is the way I shall decide about my future? Well, uh, look, there is a group of people at 19 years, uh, I mean, at, at least that's, you know, because I'm asking uh, every time, every year, I'm asking students the same question, the first class of ours, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. I mean, what, why have you decided to come to Lazowski and spend three years here? And I, and I see a lot of different answers. Mm -hmm. And there is a group of people among these students who know exactly what they are doing here, who have decided that okay, that international, in particular international relations, this is the way uh, for their career growth mm -hmm. and uh, this is what they would like to do. Mm -hmm. There are some students who are confused because, I mean, international relations, okay, we will get the basics of everything, you know, humanitarian knowledge and, you know, mm -hmm. and then afterwards we it's will... It's flexible for yes, the future. Yes, it's flexible for the future. Right. Um, and, you know, there are many reasons. Uh, the point is, it will kick in just do your research okay. now the more you study international relations economics medicine whatever the more you the more you learn the better you understand with this whether this is your way or not exactly mm -hmm. and if you understand that this is not exactly my way you understand better what exactly is your way uh, then you're okay yeah, let's, this is game let's yeah. change tracks well exactly. let's let's take the, the round turn to the city center. Yeah, so I would like to emphasize this because sometimes, uh, you know, I, I see this, I don't know how to call it, disappointment when very young person, because for me, okay, someone who's 20, 19, 20 and graduating studies and, you know, is panic in the eyes or disappointment, I still don't know who I want to become. Uh, oh my God, why did I decide to graduate economics or why did I decide to graduate something like, I don't know, management or something else. What I want to emphasize here is what Ostap actually actually said, and this is super wise, is that you did not lose anything. Because of obtaining any kind of a study, you did not lose. You gained lots of experience on the way, you met lots of people on the way, and as well, if this is not something for you, you should not be disappointed, because at least you know this is not something that I want to do, and maybe it is going to give you a base for something else in the future. Yes, for acceleration. Yeah. I mean, catching up with time, I mean, that's... Kind of so if you do not know yet, who exactly you want to become, don't panic, don't feel disappointed, because this is natural, right? It may happen. Some mm -hmm. people, they know from the age of five or four when they started dancing, or 12, or 12 <laughs> oh, God, whoever wow. they are going to become. But I remember myself when I was 19, I started studies and I was completely panicked. I didn't okay. know what I wanted to do. I only knew, for example, I love people, that I want to be with people. And so, so 
studies that I graduated helped me a little bit in that, but it was not exactly what I wanted. But it helped me to choose the right way to the city center, as we talked. Okay. Observe, adapt, overcome, and you'll succeed. Wow. S just like from Instagram, Students right? take notes, please. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it will help you out. Okay. Uh, coming back to being a lecturer. Mm -hmm. couple of questions by the way i remember that beautiful question was asked to me five years ago and i was so nervous so here's the question were you nervous when you were coming to your first class to teach to uh, your students? first class first, not as a student but as a, a as a as, as a, a lecturer. lecturer yeah i i should say that i was uh -huh. okay uh do you remember that uh i mean uh, like in details uh, no not in details uh, actually when you are when you are starting you know like uh that's 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 kind of public speaking mm -hmm. yes um when, when you're starting and my biggest fear i mean i can't recall that exact class mm -hmm. but my biggest fear was to say something stupid because well uh you are not much older than these students in front of you mm -hmm. but you are lecturer already mm -hmm. so you're on the other side of the fence mm -hmm. so you should not discredit yourself you should mm -hmm. not sound stupid and you should be i mean okay maybe inspiring in certain respect but at the same th look authoritative mm -hmm. you are the lecturer and that that was my biggest fear i mean not to say something which is not appropriate for the lecturer yeah? it means that pro that professors and lecturers are human too so <laughs> i mean th that they definitely are but but well you know like uh, when you're sp speaking about myself my first experience as a lecturer i mean th that was my my fear i mean to to behave according to standards of how lecturers should behave mm -hmm. because well i'm younger i'm not experienced uh my english might have not been perfect so i mean because it's perfect over time, be right? Sorry, I have to pull this question. Okay. Now classes look completely different way, right? All of our students and as well all of our lectures are online. Okay, yeah. it's a virtual uh, reality. Yeah. yeah, it's it's not a real real class as it was before. And some students, you know, they feel this is not exactly the way they like it. This is not exactly the way they wanted it. From your point of view as a professor, do you feel the difference in online class? Do you think they are less efficient? Uh, do you think this is something that should make a young person to resign from class because it's online? Well, speaking about my personal trauma of online classes, <laughs> dear students, when I'm you know, delivering the class, I see a little white dot near the camera of my laptop. And I'm looking at these little white dots and I understand that, you know, like the camera is on and you are watching at me. But, well, not, I, I, I can't interact with you. I'm s actually, I know that you're on the other side of the screen, but, you know, uh, that little white dot is what I'm, what, what just lets me know that, that you are there. So it's very hard, really, it's very hard to speak. For to eight hours camera, or six hours, right? For, for whatever comes, knowing that, I mean, you should not look stupid. Uh, knowing that you know students observe me all the time even if i'm not just you know if i'm not watching the uh, looking at their faces seeing their faces mm -hmm. but uh well it's kind of you are sitting in, in in a room with no noises and you're speaking to a camera and that white dot so this is challenging this is not the experience which i expected because i like interaction with people i like mm -hmm. emotions i like telling jokes and i see you know like whether these jokes are appreciated or were appreciated or not well uh, I, I i i want mm -hmm. to have people around me yeah okay so you are not the only suffering okay. let's let's put it this way if they turn the camera on and you could see their faces is it go is it making the, the things easier yeah uh, slightly yes but well it doesn't change the fact that you know i'm seeing the screen with a face mm -hmm. not a real person mm -hmm. and and that uh, that makes an impact whether to resign or not to resign definitely not guys you are living in 21st century uh, we are living in the era of electronic communication the internet whatsoever you are i mean you're using instagram right. well uh, you are not resigning from instagram because you can't speak to a person face to face right 
So, or yeah, it, and it can touch your friend, your family communication. I mean, you are not resigning from loving your grandma because it's she's thousand kilometer away, and you are talking with her only yes. through WhatsApp or something. Moreover, right? guys, uh, I, I I believe that the future of education will be more and more kind of internetized. Uh, we are shifting into that direction, into that direction of knowledge pills, into the direction of short, compressed. Uh, videos or presentation where you know like mm, volumes of information are presented in a quite condensed way so you dear students could just absorb it easily mm -hmm. uh, and and if you if you look at those trends which are happening in the, in the West Howard University it, it also went online right and it started selling its online courses which leading to leads to degree and well I mean there are students yep. studying there. So this is the trend. I mean, COVID-19 accelerated that trend. But mm -hmm. I think that the trend of switching into online studies, it's a global one. Yeah. And of course, contact with people is very important. Contact with person is uh, with a human being. And this emotional part of it is very, very important. Definitely, but, yes. yes but Believe me. It is, and it's added value, right, to, to any kind of experience. But I guess that, as you said, this is the way the world goes. And we just have to adapt to it. Mm -hmm. Adapt and take as much as we can from that. Uh, observe, adapt, overcome. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Do we have <laughs> any other questions? Notes. Yeah, sure. We have a couple of them. Uh, Ines is asking, I'm a big fan of your work. So I have a question. What is your Thanks, favorite man. thing about being a professor? Favorite thing about being a professor? Yes. Students students oh, amazing wow. and another question perfectly connected to this your answer how not to lose the connection between lecture and students what characteristics a lecture should have well uh, this is a very tricky question because what characteristics a lecturer should have it depends on the student it depends on how on the way the student absorbs information mm -hmm. because um, I mean, well, example, when I was a student uh, on, on the Department of Journalism, mm -hmm. I didn't like one particular lecturer mm -hmm. because uh, she was not reacting anyhow with, with students. She was, you know, walking uh, near the blackboard here and forth and just speaking something mm -hmm. to herself. Mm -hmm. She was not even worried whether the students are listening to her or not, but I was taking notes. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, I started reading those notes, these notes were perfectly organized. So, yes, she was not interacting in the way which I would like that to happen. But yes, the notes were perfectly clear, perfectly structured. So I learned a lot by simply rereading those notes. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it all depends. I know that there are some students who don't like me because they, I mean, I, really? read, your, I read your feedback, you dear students. So. Yeah, oh no. Guys. you speak too <laughs> fast, for instance, or, I mean, some sometimes you you speak in a very complicated way or you know like you speak too much about cars i mean sorry for that uh, but uh, well um, i mean this also shows that dear students you are different and you have different expectations uh to the lecturer to the people around mm -hmm. you to the world around you you would like the world around you to be organized in a comfortable way and this means that it's very hard to answer how to be the perfect lecturer because the perfect lecturer exists for perfect student mm -hmm. and every student is perfect therefore guys well i'm doing my best uh to keep you entertained but it doesn't mean that you know this is the, the perfect way of teaching okay i have to pull this question uh because it's a very interesting thing actually all right so let's say that i don't like some kind of lecture i'm not talking about you i'm, I'm now, I'm not talking about any particle person because, of course, let's be honest, everyone has likes or dislikes about people, right? That's, that's Someone who's natural. perfect for me doesn't have to be perfect for other person. So if a student doesn't like something particular in the classes you give or any other lecture you give, would you or other professor, how it shall be, you know, um, resolved? Shall I go directly? Shall I, shall I hit directly to the professor and say, I'm sorry, sir, or I'm sorry, ma'am. This is something I don't like in your class. Uh, would you feel offended by this? Or would it be for you or, or for other person? Shall, uh, shall this person try to change and, and grow? and take it as a as a growing point of uh, in, in the giving classes or this person definitely is going to hate you and you just fail your exam un until forever 
Uh, well, look, uh, dear students, you have this very powerful option, which is I mean, feedback. You can every mm -hmm. every semester you can fill out the forms and just you know let it was the sent out week ago by the way yes and you you may let the lecturer know all the pros and cons of his or her particular approach but is it better to come straight or is it better to write in this feedback uh, well it depends on uh, on the way how lecturer behaves mm -hmm. how lecturer you are responds. talking too fast. Uh, yeah, I'm talking. Uh, <laughs> well, you can come and and, and tell me that. Uh, by the way, you know, in, in, I I'm doing my. Uh, sorry if I'm talking too fast, but I'm doing my no, best. No, it's just an example. Well, I'm doing my <laughs> best, yes, to to after I after I got that feedback to to talk slower. Yeah? Okay. Because, because that that really, I mean, that helped me. I I, I got a, another perspective, uh, and you know, again, there are different people. Mm -hmm. There are different students. Uh, there are students who are, you know, like justice must prevail. I am going and I'm telling that particular lecturer whatever I think of him or her. Uh -huh. That's fine. That's you know the personality of a student. And there are also different lecturers. There are lecturers who are ready to absorb the, the feedback information. Mm -hmm. uh, then there are lecturers who are ready to absorb, but they have so much you know duties on their mm -hmm. hands that they may look not that kind of willing but well they are mm -hmm. so it, it, it's, it's all uh, everything's very situational mm -hmm. uh, the, the point is ladies and gentlemen here at Lazarski we have a very cool set of lecturers and they have a lot to tell you so if you are here get the knowledge get your discovery mm -hmm. even if you do not particularly enjoy the way this particular lecture delivers mm -hmm. information to you he or she delivers information and you may use that information to broaden your own horizons, to grow, to get new reading, to open another book. I mean, the lecturer sets the guideline. Uh, whether you like him or her or not, mm -hmm. well, you have that guideline. So use it. Right. That's an amazing advice, actually. Uh, I see that we have other questions coming. We have a question and we, and we have a comment from my colleague, Magda Mitchkowska, who is saying, Mr. Ostap, I cannot prepare my dinner because this episode is so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Okay. And the question, you're saying that we have different lectures and all of the students, our students and every student uh, is different, right? But do you see... Uh, specific common features for example among IR students and among management students because here we have a question most of the time you are teaching IR students how it is to teach management students with definitely other point of view uh, let's put it this way uh, IR students they are more idealist mm -hmm. they um, they are more like Mm, uh, we want to change the world to the better and we are either taking uh, you know super drastic steps and become superheroes on international level or we are building up our careers in a way that gradually you know step by step we will do something we will make an impact yeah so even through social media whatever so mm -hmm. in, because I mean, social media is also part of international relations and it's power too yes it's power so you, you have this kind of more idealism yeah uh, in international relations managers uh, they are more pragmatic. They are just, okay, this is a good idea. Okay, let me check whether it works or not. Oh, no, it doesn't work my time. I mean, let's, uh, something else. So managers, they are, they are more result-oriented, let's put it this mm -hmm. way, while IR students, they are more process-oriented. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, you know, like, to summarize briefly, my impression. Wow, that's a very interesting, interesting. comment, actually. I think it's accurate. Sorry, I, I mean, I think it's accurate, you know, observing different people applying for different kind of degrees. I think it might be, it might be uh, accurate. I don't know, for me it's so difficult to answer such Because actually questions. you might be a mix of both of this. Mix of both, <laughs> thank you for um, the compliment. Actually, uh, all stop, uh, we are not having loads of time left, you know, because th the talk is so pleasurable and it's, uh, you have so many interesting things to, to say that we would most probably have to sit here for one week and discuss different kind of things. But I think there's something important, you know, this is guys a last uh a last episode before your winter holiday before the 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 seasonal break right because uh we we are here in poland so during the christmas period and new year new year time uh you are on off so you have two amazing weeks off uh you can prepare your essays you can prepare yourself for exams or you can just enjoy your time during this time 
Uh, but you know, I would like to talk about some kind of practical advices for students. Mm, actually, some of our students, they are going to celebrate Christmas, they are going to celebrate New Year in a very small groups of people, according to the pandemics, yeah, remember? Yeah, we cannot do that in big groups. Yes, yeah, so... Or, not only students. I'm yeah, not only students. Everyone is going to... Everyone. Uh, but okay, some, some of students, they are going to do it. They are Catholics or, or, uh, or um, they are going to do it together with the family because this is a tradition, okay? But as well, there is a group of our students that they are not going to celebrate it, maybe because they are atheists yeah. or maybe they are they are of a different religion mm -hmm. so they do not practice uh Chris christmas uh, uh so what is going to be an interesting tip uh, an interesting advice from your side and I, preparing for exams is not the you know interesting one uh what is your tip what what would you advise to do during this time because actually guys none of us here is i mean all three of us we are we are not catholics so uh we are interested in all these interesting tips what to do during these two weeks uh first of all let's look at the fact yeah you'll have two weeks that's of, lots of time you can you can set records Records of watching movies, records of sleeping, records of cooking dinner or supper, because food is important, believe me. Uh, you may set, I mean, if you want to set a record, just invent what kind of record you would like to set and, and do it. You may set a record even on reading your books and getting yourself ready for the exam. Right. The point is, uh, do something. And do something creative. Because creativity and discovery this is what makes you fill your life with memorable achievements if i mean the the, the, the things which actually stick to your head they are the different things they are not ordinary things which you have every day you cannot recall every day of your studying at the university mm -hmm. i mean but you can recall certain particular dates where you have you heard you know the best joke from the lecture or your you know ms teams went off and you could not reconnect so uh, these were you know outstanding uh, events so fill out your two weeks with these kind of outstanding things what are these things? This depends up to mm -hmm. you. This depends on whatever you are interested in. Maybe some of you are aware, like we're waiting for these two weeks to come into your life and finally I can mm -hmm. have a long sleep. So, well, this is up to you. Just be creative. And if you lack ideas, uh, join different Facebook groups, join different forums, read the books you never hoped to read before. And here is the perfect time to ask the last question. What is your top three books that I must to read? Oh gosh. I mean, this is so unfair. Oh, you have it on the table. <laughs> 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 no, not, not, not really. Uh, I mean, the, uh, these are the, you know, the books, they have their flaws, let's put it this way. Uh, three major books. Uh, Ray Bradbury. 451 Ferngate, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Then, uh, when I was a child, I liked uh, Raphael Sabatini. He was writing about pirates, the Odyssey of Captain Blood Odyssey. Mm, then, th th the third book. Oh, something from Jeremy Clarkson. I know you got so. Actually, the, the it, it was a guy asking. So, as I'm at back, I hope that you love cars. Uh, actually, it's very difficult, right? There's so many interesting books. Yes. The, it's uh, so difficult well, to, to name this three. The, the problem with me is that there are so many different and interesting books which I would love, but I have no idea they exist. Mm -hmm. So, and you, if, you, if you know that there is something, but you do not know exactly what it is, it's, it's hard to make a decision. Guys, if you want to share in our Instagram, okay? So, Lazarski Instagram or Lazarski Student Help Desk, share the top three books that you love the most. By the way, that's... Because sharing the knowledge, actually, because your three books, my three books, and your three books might, might be completely different. So if you will add your three fame, your top uh, top uh, read books, let us know. Maybe this is something that we are going to yes, read and we can share. That is something which may actually lead to discovery. Because if you share your three books, I am not aware, that would be discovery for me. And if I like that book, well, thank you very much. I mean, help others, broaden yeah. horizons of others, just interconnect. 
Right. That that's actually uh, an amazing idea. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, this is how you create challenges for yeah, Instagram. Yeah, e exactly. <laughs> uh, but but interesting challenges. Interesting. And, and remember, very useful. remember, guys. I wanted to add as a, one of the last things that Ostap, you are super active on social media. You are one of these professors of ours that you are very active on Facebook. You are very active on Instagram. So if someone wants to approach you after this event on Instagram. Osnir, right? Os Osnir, yeah. Right, and ask you about top books, or maybe ask you about cars, or maybe ask yeah, you about any welcome. other thing related to your job. Uh, are you happy to invite yeah, the person yeah, there? I mean, I, I'll do my best to, to address all the queries, all the questions. Definitely. Guys, you have an amazing opportunity to actually directly contact Ostap and uh, and discuss any kind of interesting uh, topic that will help you to get to the city center, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, <laughs> I, I would be happy to do that. But but guys, do not forget that I'm also on my way to the city center. So <laughs> you have to go together. <laughs> yes, yeah, is one of the options. Right, and. Um, last thing, like completely last, because we have mm -hmm. five minutes left. Uh, you know. I discovered something that uh, Ostap is doing, which is very unique. Not many people is doing it. I was never doing it. Uh, and I, I, I do not know many people doing it. With end of every year, you do a summary of your year. You do a summary of your achievements, of your thoughts over that year. Why do you do it? And would you recommend other people to do this kind of things? And I'm not talking about depressive lying in bed, you know, with the end of a year and alcohol and crying or oh, uh, this year sucks and everything was sucks. No, your um, summary of the year is very interesting because you are always trying to find things that filled up your year and brought you closer, actually, to your aim. Uh, well, uh, that summary is... Mm. Uh, you can read it online, by the way. You can find uh, it, it <laughs> it's, it's, it's not that easy to find, let's put it this way. On social media. Yeah, yeah <laughs> because I'm, I'm trying to just, you know, like sometimes to contain the information I'm sharing. Uh, so uh, the summaries, um, well, at a certain moment of time, I just, you know, looked at my life and I decided to, it was some time ago, and I decided just, you know, like to, to measure pluses and minuses to achievements mm -hmm. and you know kind of misachievements or the dreams which I had at 16 years being 16 years old and you know really what I have at this particular moment and uh, some of them yes I mean some achievements were accomplished I mean tiny minority mm -hmm. some things they were achieved or mm -hmm. achievements were accomplished though in a very different way and I imagined way back when I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And there is a group of things uh, where I failed. Mm -hmm. uh, failed objectively because, well, I didn't know how to. And failed subjectively yes, because I had, right. I, I knew how to, but I underperformed, I did something wrong and uh, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons, uh, I mean, two major reasons I'm writing this up. First, to make this kind of, you know, like the balance, uh, the check of what, what was happening. And, and secondly, simply to just to communicate a message to, to the readers that uh, failure is unnatural. Uh, you cannot achieve everything you wish on the very first attempt. Uh, subjectively, objectively, you will fail. And the higher you want to go, I mean, the bigger the fail will be. Because but is it if, bad? It's not bad. It mm -hmm. is what happens. Uh, I mean, if you are ambitious enough, be ready to fail. And do not just, you know, like, <laughs> start depressing. Don't mm -hmm. start depressing mm -hmm. just, you know, from the understanding that you failed. Well, you failed today. Yes, that was painful. That was that you really hoped you will succeed. You invested a lot of time into that. Really, but you failed. That's natural. Well, it, it happens. Is it good to make a plan with an end of a year of what I want to achieve next year? Is it good to set yourself a goal? It's good because that's, you know, like you are setting the city center. You're putting the city center on the map. And these small steps are bringing yes, you closer. But, but also do not forget that plan is one thing, but opportunities are different things. So there may, on your way to city center, you may just be offered a different, a, a lot of opportunities coming unexpectedly to you. So your plan should be flexible enough to embrace opportunities. Yes, you should have a plan, definitely. 
You should know what mm. you are doing now, what, where you will be in five years, in 10 years, in 15 years, in, in 20 years. When you will have a family, where you will be employed, whether it will be your personal business or you will work, for instance, for European mm -hmm. Commission in Brussels. You need to have it already in your mind now because you are here at Lazarsky and Lazarsky provides you with tools to get your plans into reality, to put your plans into reality. So you should know what, what, where you are going to. You should have the city center. Yeah, but on the way, there are different opportunities. Yeah, so you, you, ha you should be flexible You should be flexible, change. but you should not be just, you know... Missing your point. Yeah, missing the tracks. So just, you know where you're going and you can go different ways there. Okay, perfect. Do we have any questions from, from, from our students? No, we do not. And I think this is the perfect moment to choose the best one and the most interesting question Comment. of uh, yeah. today's episode. Which was well, not easy. Which was the most like triggering for you, let's say? Uh, the most triggering? It's probably what would I tell my younger self if I had that opportunity. It was question from Ines. It Am was question from Ines. Yes. Okay. So Ines, you won an amazing, uh, amazing gadget from Lazarsky University. So we are going to leave a pack for you at the entrance on sector D with your name and surname. So from tomorrow afternoon, you can come and pick your pack. We, we are so proud. Thank you very much. Thank you very and much. actually, all the questions today were so interesting. We they got, were. Yeah. We got many interesting questions I mean, thank you very much for the this question guys. about three books that made me think <laughs> so uh yeah so um so it was a question from azamad beck azamad beck my advice for you is really share your top three books with us uh, on instagram and i think it's a nice thing to do so every one of you who are here to share their books i actually i'm going to search some interesting books at home which were uh, you know like the you know uh, uh, some kind of a mile for me too um and i think it's nice to share with it yeah because maybe we never know about mm -hmm. existence of these yeah. books guys it was our last episode uh before uh before the christmas and seasonal break and the new year break the next episode is going to be from the second monday of january so when you are going to be back uh, to your uh, class activities online and then we will be happy as well to see you again uh, we are going to of course inform you ab about that on instagram on facebook so definitely uh, not miss our episode after the new year because we have so many more interesting guests coming uh, remember that you can share as well with us on instagram mm -hmm. who you want to invite next time because remember this event is for you we want to share the most important thoughts that are going to help you uh you know to get to the city center so thank you very much it was so lovely to have you all with us thank you uh, we thank wish you for sharing you your knowledge for inspiring speech wow actually. it was my that pleasure was an inspiring speech it, yes it, it was, was amazing uh, thank you for for this exchange thank you for all these questions uh they really were catchy and I mean, they made me reflect on myself as well. So thank you. I, it was my really honor and pleasure to be here. Ostap, what kind of wishes you have with the end of this year for our students? Uh, be creative and successful. And we wish you lots of health. We wish you to have an amazing time and use this time for new challenges, new opportunities uh, to be creative as we talked. Uh, and you know, stay joyful, rest a bit and come back with new energy and new power in 2021. And believe me, we can't wait to see you here with us. Thanks a lot and bye-bye. Happy New Year. All the best. Have a nice break.